first and foremost, welcome everyone. Thank you for coming here. We know uh, everyone's very busy, so uh, the fact that you're uh, taking part of your time uh, to attend this presentation, we're very, very grateful, uh, very honored. Uh, also, uh, we wish everyone is safe and healthy from our home to your home, from our office to your office, your classroom or your studio. Uh, my name is Raul Herrera. I'm the uh, manager here for Canada at CCI Learning. Um, and I'm going to be your uh, host for today. Uh, we're going to see Jasper Active Adobe Create. This is the launch, the official launch uh, worldwide. So uh, we're very, very happy to uh, to present this product for you. Uh, I apologize for, for my accent. I'm from, from Mexico City. So if you don't understand uh, something that I say, I, I really, I'm really sorry. I'm trying to talk slower and you know, a little bit more enunciated. So we don't get into that problem. Um, anyways, uh, let's uh, review the agenda. Uh, I'm going to do the welcome and the introductions. Then we're going to go into a deep dive of our brand new product, Jasper Active Adobe Create for Photoshop, this first uh, version of, uh, of Jasper Active for, for Adobe. Um, then we're going to talk a little bit about the updates and new programs that are coming in the future. Uh, a little bit of, of how you can acquire uh, this product or any other product for, for that matter from us. And then a little bit more uh, time for questions and answers. However, uh, talking a little bit about housekeeping um, situations here, uh, everyone is muted just to, to keep the presentation flowing a little bit faster. However, if you have any question at any moment, in the, for the people that are not that used to use uh, Teams, in the upper side of your screen, you'll see a little chat icon. You click there, it will open on the right side of your screen, and then you can ask a question. We have a team of our experts ready to answer any questions you might have at any moment. However, at the end of the presentation, we're given enough time to ask specific questions to Keith, who's going to present the product. So if, in case you want to see something specific within the product, um, it, he, he will show you specifically at the end of, of the session. But don't think that you have to wait for that moment. Well, at any moment, you can, you can um, start uh, asking questions or any comments you may have for us. Um, speaking very, very quickly who we are, uh, as a first publisher, now developer of uh, education technology solutions. CCI Learning is a Canadian company. We're based here just right outside of Vancouver in, in the West Coast in a city called Langley. And for 30 years, we have been first publishing uh, material for uh, education. Specifically, we started with anything that has to do with specific uh, skills such as Microsoft Office, etc. First with books, then we move to ebooks, getting with the technology trend, um, and we started slowly migrating or expanding from from publisher to publisher, <laughs> software developer. <coughs> as you can see now with our latest product, uh, just proactive Adobe Create. However, everything we do here comes with a specific mantra or our president uh, Vanessa will call our ethos, which is one, every lifetime deserves to be maximized. How do we help in that is by empowering students with future ready skills of the uh, utmost importance, as you will see today. Then I'm going to explain how this concept applies into our products, but that helps to uh, what we try to do is a methodology of learning by engaging, by doing, not just by being passive and receiving the information. And that, we believe, gives a positive synergy that keeps um, creating in a positive way uh, better students, which means uh, better citizens of the world, which is what, we, what we're trying to achieve here. Uh, a little bit about our team. So with me today, our Expert for the product, we're going to do the actual presentation of, of, of Just for Active Adobe Create is uh, Keith German. He is uh, the regional actualization manager for the US. Also, for all uh, with us is uh, Sunday Morio Toto, our partner account manager. And 
the Canadian team with me is Ray Telili, who's for the west side of Canada, and Jessica Casey for the east side of Canada. Uh, you can see them in their screen saying hi. Um, any information you may have will explain at the end how to communicate with us. Um, talking a little bit before we actually see the product, uh, why Jasper Active? I always like to explain um, the name Jasper Active is based on um, it's a tribute to one of the creators, uh, a teacher when he was uh, in university that changed his life professionally and personally. The name of, of the teacher was Jasper. And uh, when we when he started creating the, the, the product with, with his thing, he decided to honor his teacher by by uh, naming the product like uh, like his teacher Jasper. Uh, I think that's a great way to show everyone how we are really committed. What I was mentioning before on on, on our ethos, uh, we know uh, teaching is very important in in the world, specifically in in, in the education systems, and um, and that's why we we named the product Jasper Active. And for the people that know other versions of Jasper Active, we've been developing for quite a few number of years now um, the, for different applications. Uh, maybe the most common at this point until now is um, Microsoft Office. So since the beginning, when we started creating just for active, the idea is learning by doing. We don't want the students just to, to sit down uh, passively and, and getting the information. We want them to do the tasks, and once they know how to do them, move to the next one, move to the next one, as we're going to see specifically with, with just for active for Adobe, uh, which makes it more hands-on, more engaging, and, and more fun. We want them to have fun learning, right? Uh, and that also helps the teachers because you will see with Jasper Active. Um, I, I always my, my wife is actually a, 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 a teacher as well. She she teaches in a college here in in, in Victoria, and uh, I always tell her like for for teachers you have you have three jobs: preparing for the class, teaching the class, and then grading the class. But well, they only pay you for one job, just teaching the class, right? So there's a lot of prep time, there's a lot of grading time. And what we're trying to do, helping the teachers is with Jasper Active, it's a great tool that you can reduce your prep time, you can reduce your grading time, and you can make the teaching more engaging, more fun, uh, which is one of the main uh, goals that we have here. However, for the people that know Jasper Active in our other versions, uh, Microsoft Office, Digital Literacy, et cetera, et cetera, Adobe Create, it's a completely new line that we, we, we take it to the next generation of, of Jasper Active. Um, we got the opportunity to see the product before we are launching it uh, publicly now to the world. And it has fantastic features that you will see uh, from Keith, uh, like one of my favorites is called Show Me, which is more a dynamic way of seeing how to do the task instead of a, a stationary uh, uh, picture, it's it's a dynamic GIF that you will see, oh, in order to drag and drop here, you have to click here and, and you drag and drop. So um, our first uh, version of uh, Adobe Create Line is Photoshop. So we no further ado, now I give the microphone to Keith so he can actually show us the actual product. Thank you very much and see you later. Awesome. So when this is done, you're all going to get a certification in language, dialect, accent, because we are moving from Mexico to Texas. Woo! And if you can handle that and you can handle uh, Raul's accent followed by mine, then you deserve an you deserve a certification of some sort. That's all I can say. Uh, could I get someone to please confirm that you're seeing the Jasper Active Adobe Create page that I've just shared? Yes, we yes we can. Thank you, Jess. Thank you, Raul. Awesome, awesome. Well, hello from Texas. Howdy, as we like to say. Howdy from Texas. Uh, so it's my privilege to demonstrate to you uh, this product that we're very excited for. This is this is the Jasper Active Adobe Create and our first course some might call it an application but our first course to launch is photoshop 
So uh, I'm excited to demonstrate to you how this uh, product works. Uh, just some of the framework or groundwork, if you will, just to make sure that we're all clear. Uh, this is, as you're seeing on my screen, I hope, this is live in the application, okay? So to follow up the kinesthetic hands-on learn by doing component that Raul spoke of, uh, you're going to do your student learners adult learners whoever they may be are going to learn not only hands-on but within the product this is not going to be a student sitting at a screen and just watching videos and hoping they learn right this is hands-on kinesthetic in the application learning so one of the things and by the way i'm a certified teacher in texas i come from the classroom and one of the things that's very critical, at least for me, when I was in the classroom, that does not apply to all educators or instructors or professors, uh, and that is the self-paced component, the way this was designed. So you're seeing our pathway, the learning pathway here visibly on the screen. So students will begin with a benchmark assessment. So we need to find out what they know and maybe more importantly, what they do not know, so that we can prepare, ready for this term, an individualized learning pathway or a plan for that particular student learner. And this software has that technology programmatically built in. But what do I mean by that? That means that when someone logs into this and they take a benchmark assessment and score whatever they score, right? I think you'd all agree that they're probably not going to do so well initially. It's not unusual even, at least in my class, it wasn't unusual that we'd have students that scored. Honestly, I had some score zero percent, six percent, eight percent, twelve percent, not too bad actually. And every once in a while I'd sneak a, uh, sneak a student in there that was scoring in the 40 plus percent even at the benchmark pre-learning level. Then you go into the lessons right here, and each lesson begins with a quiz. That too is part of the prescriptive learning pathway. And so between the benchmark assessment result, which is an immediate result, and the quiz result, pre-lesson, pre-learning quiz result, our software takes those results and we build an individualized prescriptive learning pathway for that student learner. So here's what I mean. You see here lesson one, two, three, four, five, six. If a, if a learner takes the benchmark and they do pretty well on it, and then they take lesson one quiz and they do pretty well on it, it's possible folks that lesson one will not even appear on their screen. They have tested out of it, right? So that is per student it's possible that you might have a lab that your learners come into and this student on the left and this student on the right have different criteria appearing on their screen different lesson exercises appearing on their screen and that is because our software uh, builds a learning plan that's individualized for the student so let that soak in i think you get kind of what i'm describing everything and i just wanted to touch on that but also if you choose as the instructor as the educator as the person that's facilitating learning in this system if you choose you can essentially lay the groundwork for your students and tell them to get started with the benchmark and then go into the lessons and follow the flow and they can be self-paced now why is that important because this is not just a software that's only for schools this application took into consideration and it was designed and developed possibly for a workforce development agency, uh, possibly for individual adult learners who are having trouble getting hired and they need to advance their skills. So they have individually possibly purchased the application. Uh, we've even had organizations, nonprofit organizations come to us who are helping folks who are transitioning back into the workforce. One example might be coming out of prison and they have gone to that nonprofit to advance their skills and they've come in and they need this application. So you kind of see where we have tried to take into consideration uh, 
uh, all various types of learnings, uh, learning students at various levels of their skills. And of course, we also uh, have a great array of universities and professors. So post high school student learners coming in here and using the application as well. So we've talked about it's live in the application. We've talked about the fact that it's self-paced and it's kinesthetic learning and those kind of things. The one thing I haven't mentioned yet is let me just share with you. I am using a Windows based machine at the moment, but because this is Adobe specific because this is live in the application, which means you will have Adobe installed on your machine locally. This will run on both a Windows or a Mac. OK, so keep that in mind. This is a multi platform product and that's going to be a wonderful thing. We've talked about the various learning styles and so, and so forth, the prescriptive learning pathway. And so kind of let me let me kind of transition and show you some of these things here and how it works. Uh, notice also, as you see here, if you're at all even a little bit familiar with the exam itself, then you will understand that we have used in our curriculum all the items necessary. We've applied them that is consistent with the objectives and domains of the certification exam. So what that simply means is a student learner can use our application. You will facilitate their learning. They will go through the curriculum and we will prepare them to pass a certification exam. OK, all of the objectives and domains necessary to achieve that result are within the curriculum. So I wanted to touch on that. So the student learner will come in and log in. And, and by the way, once Jasper, once Adobe is installed on your machine and once you get the this is called an Adobe extension. So kind of think like a Google Chrome browser and you do extensions. This is an Adobe extension. That's how it runs. That's why it's appearing as it is here. And it's as simple as just going down here to uh, window extensions and I have Adobe or excuse me, Jasper Active and then it launches the Jasper Active application. So I, the student, have already logged in with my user account. At this point in time, if we do have any educators or teachers that are on on the session today, then you will have already built out in our Jasper Active system that we'll look at later the class groups and that would give you a code, if you will, per class or grouping of students and you will have distributed those codes out to those student learners and then when they create their user account and they get the let's let's get started uh, option, they click that and our system will prompt them for a code. Once they put that code into that field and, and select to continue, then this is what appears right here. So you have that capability of setting up your classes, of grouping your students and all those things. So a student's gonna come in and they're gonna take the benchmark assessment. Now, Keith German has already taken his benchmark assessment. We only have so much time today. I just kind of wanted to show you and I'm very humble. Can you tell? Uh, so I scored a zero of 12. Hey, everybody's celebrating. Uh, once the student, as you see here, a student gets an immediate feedback. I don't think I've actually said it out loud, but I want to be very clear. Our software does the grading for you. All educators just raise their both of their hands in celebration. Uh, you're not going to have to go home and sit on the carpet and on the evenings and the weekends and do all this grading. Our software takes care of that for you. In addition, the student can always come back later if they need to. Uh, maybe they need some remediation that's necessary and they want to touch on certain elements. They can always come in here and click view result and then our software will show them what they got right and what they got wrong. The other piece that's here and if you will entertain me and let's assume that the first five here are green check marks. They did it right. But if you would, let's assume that a just layer group has a red X. OK, and the rest have check marks. Well, it looks like they need to focus a little bit on learning the adjust and layer group a little more. So we have built into our application an ebook. It's built into the application. It's available to them at various points. It is not available to them, I think, obviously, during assessments. And you saw on the screen we have a benchmark and we have a summary assessment. So it's not available to them during the assessment, but after the assessment or during learning at any point in time, they may see this book icon and when they click it, 
our software opens up our ebook and it is also context sensitive so we will take them specifically to the section in the book that they need to know for wherever they clicked okay so they won't have to go hunting for that and outside of those book icons they can just simply go to the ebook option on the main menu and they can click the ebook option and then they get uh, the entire book available to them uh, and they can click anything they want and drill down to the book. OK, and as you can see here, our software will take them where they need to. OK, so I wanted to touch on that. The other uh, piece that I wanted to touch on here is that the lessons I hinted to this earlier. I'm going to go down to lesson four because I've already done some things in one through three and I'm going to click start and look what we start with. They do not just get pushed right into learning curriculum. They first have to assess further for this lesson component, this domain. They've got to quiz on this, and then we will decide how many of the exercises to portray to them based on their benchmark and their quiz. So visually, this is what it looks like, and we give them a quiz to start with. When they go to lessons and they pick a lesson, then they begin their learning. So I call this as a teacher terminology. I think many of you will understand this. This is guided instructional learning. We guide them. We teach them. We tell them exactly what to do. They're not in an assessment at this point in time. They're now learning the product. So we break everything out by course or application. So that's Photoshop. Then Within Photoshop, you have various lessons. Those are the objectives and domains they need to learn. Then within each lesson, they have exercises. OK, and that could vary. The number of exercises may vary per lesson. And then within each exercise, they have tasks or steps that they have to complete. So maybe question one of one or question one of three and then two of three and then three of three. So they may have one or multiple tasks or steps to complete. All right, so let me kind of um, show you one right here. If I come in here, uh, one thing I wanted to show you for the visual things that Raul was talking about is here I can tell as both a student and a teacher that this student has done these two exercises and these green dots mean to me that not only did they do them, but they got them correctly. So they have made 25% progress on this lesson. OK, so they get the visual indicators now. I know that in I did an exercise earlier and I come in here and I'm scrolling down. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. That's not a green dot. OK, so this student has made 3% progress on lesson three. But what does this mean? Well, this means that exercise eight actually has multiple tasks to complete. So if I hit start right now, notice right there, I have question one of two, not one of one. So there's multiple tasks. I will tell you just for purposes of the demonstration today that I did that. I got one of one correct, but I missed two of two. So I've done about 50% of this exercise and therefore I don't have my green dot yet. So visual indicators all throughout the lesson. Now, if I come in here and I start with um, lesson, lesson one, and let's take a peek at exercise five, okay? And I come in here, of course, like any good teacher, we always start with an objective statement and we hit start. Now, notice the ebook is available. This one has only question of one of one. I will tell you, for those of you who are educators and you like, you want to hear this or something, we have broken the learning content into small chunks for consumption purposes and for some, usually in the school arena, for some folks, they want small chunks because their class periods are only so many minutes long and they don't want a student to get into this multi-layered exercise and get two of 12 items done and all of a sudden they got to leave. So we intentionally, plus the other thing is honestly, students, especially students today, they learn in small chunks. They learn best. Most do. OK, so this tells me to select the type tool. It even gives me the visual indicator that Raul talked about. So I'm going to come over here to this large ribbon over here. Up oh, there it is. So I select the type tool. OK, it even shows you what it looks like and where it is. It says click on the blue ribbon. So I'm going to click on it. 
and type happy grandparents day. And then it tells me to click the commit button. Well, that's up here. There it is. It even shows me. Okay. Then it says click at the sentence. Okay, so I'm going to click at it. And it says right click and select all. And it says right click again because that's where the function is. Select an item there and then click commit. Okay, things look a little different there. I'm making some improvements. And then it says go to the file menu and click save. Okay, so I've done exactly what it's told me to do. And do you see here, I'm going to expand this if you will. Do you see my instruction screen? Some are visual indicators that are static, but there are times that the student really kind of needs to see it. They maybe reading isn't their strength and you kind of see how that works. Here to click, so can someone verify me for that, I'm, that I'm still live and you're hearing me? Because it sounded like I lost the call. Am I good? Okay, I'm seeing people shake heads, so I'm gonna keep going. Thank you, I don't know what that click was. Okay, um, so you see the visual indicator component to it. So now I'm gonna hit submit. I'm submitting this exercise to be graded. Let me scroll this over here and then I'm now I hit submit. I now need to hit finish. The reason for the submit to the finish is because this is question 101. If it was question one of three, then submit would take me to two or three. Submit again would take me to three or three and then I finish. When you're finished with that exercise, the student gets immediate feedback. There it is. Hey, everybody celebrate with me. I got it right. Hey, Keith. Now, However, thank you, I saw that. However, what if I didn't get it right? What if I got it wrong? We have an awesome tool called, thank y'all, show me. Y'all are such an interactive group, I love y'all. And we come in here and we have the ability to go through a show me video and the system will literally video specific, you notice how I'm expanding my screen to get it a little bit larger, Video specific, it will show them how to do the exercise. That's going to be critical for visual learners. You understand? I know you do. Visual learners will benefit from that greatly. Okay. Now, because I'm on limited time, and I know that uh, Raw and them are going to interrupt me if I start running short or start running long, actually, but I wanted to kind of show you a particular component here. And so I'm going to switch screens. Let me see here if I can get Microsoft to stop putting news up on my screen. Thank you, Microsoft. OK, so I've dragged a screen over. And it is committed. Microsoft is very committed to showing me news today, clearly. OK, so I'm going to I'm going to need the head nod. Everybody see the Jasper Active. What is Jasper Active screen? OK, I'll, anytime I do a demonstration, it scares me when I move from one screen to another sometimes. Way to go, Microsoft Teams today. All right, so I'm gonna go into Microsoft and I'm gonna log in. Now I'm talking to the educators on the session today, okay? I'm gonna log in as an educator. I have an account and I'm gonna give you at least a taste today of what it might look like for an educator to log into Jasper Active and to actually set up their course, set up their class and get things going. Uh, that's part of the product, just a taste of what the student experiences and some of the functionality available to them. OK, so I'm going to come down here to my teacher panel. Now, this is our teacher panel. This is where teachers go to set up their courses. And so everything works around a group. This is just terminology. OK, you may call it something else, but we call it groups. Group keys is our student course activation code okay and you have the ability to import student records into our software as opposed to the students individually setting their own user accounts up you the teacher before the students even walk into your class you can have everything set up you can set your class groups up and have the class codes ready to distribute you can then import your students and when you import your students you can go ahead and plug those codes in and guess what they're all set up they're ready to go okay 
And in addition to that, we have download teacher resources. If you don't know, if you were to make a purchase of this product, it comes with your purchase resources to help you deliver or to facilitate the learning with the students. So let me give you a taste. As a teacher, I'm going to come in here or an instructor. And I'm going to hit add new group. And guys, this is pretty straightforward. I'm going to come in here and this is my adult uh, class session one. OK, so I'm a workforce development uh, organization. Maybe uh, I'm going to come in here and choose my license. I'm going to give it a start date. When do I want this course for this group to begin? When do I want this course for this group to end? Give it a start and finish date. These are all modifiable fields, by the way. I might give it a description right here and entering the workforce um, professional development. Hey, I can still tap. There we go. All right, and then I'm going to come down here and choose Adobe. OK, and when I do that, I hit save. And guess what our software does? It produces an automatic code that you're then going to give to that student or those students. And that's what's going to give them access into your into the software. OK, so uh, it's pretty straightforward. It's pretty easy to use. Uh, import students is simply clicking it and then you go in and we give you we actually give you the template to just go fill data with fill in these fields, choose the file, import, and the students are in. It really is that straightforward. Download teacher resources. I just kind of want to give you a taste of what you would have available to you for you visual learners. We are adding to this, but we actually, our software, as you see here, we push all the student coursework out as they're pushing buttons and as they're moving along with their lesson learning. But we give you the educator, if you want to see it yourself, we give you the educator the student files. You can actually take a look at the files that our software is loading and what they look like structurally uh, and instructionally. We give you a mapping of our data, OK? A course outline if you need to publish that. And for all those quizzes the students are uh, taking, we give you an answer key, OK? So I just kind of wanted to give you a feel for what that looks like there. Now. Let me give you a little bit of a teaser here if I can. We have something coming. We're talking like any day now. I really wanted it today, but we're going to get it. I promise you it's any day now. We have something really cool coming. Drum roll, please. And it's integrating the awesome tool called Microsoft Immersive Reader into the Jasper Active Adobe Create Learning System. What does that mean? That means when that integration goes live soon, your student learners will have the ability to have the content on the screen read to them. Stop and just let that soak in from an accommodation standpoint, from an accessibility standpoint, and so forth. And so I was just going to kind of give you a taste of that a little bit here because it is live in one of our applications. If you if you'll bear with me, I'm going to go into the our Moss application that is an online application. And this will give you a little taste on what that looks like as well. But I'm going to go into Microsoft Word and I'm going to go into Benchmark. I have the ability, if you don't know, because I'm in my web browser, I have the ability to highlight text, right click and say, help me read this. And Microsoft is so amazing. Watch what I do. It comes up and then I might hit play. Instructor. Now I'm going to stop. That's awesome by in and of itself. Notice I've got some purple in here, but that's just simply because I told it that I want it to turn on the nouns and make them purple verbs, adjectives, adverbs. I can choose different colors and I can turn them on and off as I wish. But here's where it gets really cool. You ready for this? Raul will love this. Raul, or you hope you're sitting down. Spanish Mexico. I'm going to hit the document button. Notice what it did on screen and I hit play. We cannot hear by the way. Um... Roll, do you have any idea what that just said? Because I don't. 
I have no clue what that just said. And <laughs> we if I had more time, it, so... Ray, I promise I would put French on here if I had more time, but I'm going to move on. And we would, or we could just unmute Ray and let him speak to us in French and read this and everything. But I just kind of wanted to give you a taste for the immersive reader and how amazing of an accessibility and a learning tool that is. Uh, and then give you uh, just that. Now, from a report standpoint, uh, we'll continue to add to these and improve upon these and everything, but you have various reporting that's available to you as an instructor, as an educator, professor, and so forth. Okay. All right. So, just wanted to touch on that. I'm going to kind of move this back off of my screen. There we go. And I'm coming back into the Adobe Photoshop product. I want to kind of, I'm kind of a summary kind of guy, but if you will, before we move into any extensive Q&A and so forth, uh, and I see that some of my colleagues are addressing some of that already live as I'm going along, hope I'm not missing anything too critical. Uh, but um, as, as we come along this, just kind of touch on a summary. The software provides you auto grading. We will grade the benchmark. We will grade all lesson exercises top to bottom. And if I go back to the dashboard here, I need to touch on one specific thing as well. In addition to the immersive reader component that is forthcoming any day now, I talked to you about our prescriptive learning pathway and here's our pathway. There is a piece missing that I have been told is also coming probably within the next 30 days or so. So certainly before anyone were to get this product and actually even need this item, it will be released is, is the key here. But when a student completes their benchmark and they complete their lessons they've learned, they probably should be ready to now at least demonstrate that they can pass a certification exam. Okay, now they'll do that through our summary assessment, but right above summary assessment will be a new box soon and it will be called create or create project. Educators celebrate. We are going to add into the product a project, not guided instruction, show me project. So students, it's as someone that comes from the classroom, I will tell you, it is one thing for a student to read an instruction and to follow that instruction and to do it. And a lot of people can do that, but they, can they retain what they've learned? Can they apply what they've learned? Can they demonstrate content mastery? There's our educator terminology, right? The create project is going to then affirm those extra elements of learning. Here's a project. We've given you the project scope. We've even given you a checklist of your rubric like items, if you will, your tasks that you must complete, but we're not going to tell you how to do it. Open up a blank Photoshop document and get busy. Do this, do this, do this, do this, apply what you've learned and then submit. Here's the great part. Then submit your final product, drag and drop it into Jasper Active. And guess what we're going to do? Everyone knows grade it. We're going to grade it. So it's pretty awesome. So there is a new element that is forthcoming and it will be out soon. The show me tool is probably my favorite feature as an educator in this tool, and that is the ability to help our visual learners. There are just a lot of people that struggle with written instruction and the visual learning component is going to help them tremendously. I'm, I'm so excited that that made it into this product. Um, Windows Mac, I'm so glad that this is not just a Windows product. Uh, we talked about the extensive use of the graphics and also keeping the learning curriculum within small chunks. So I just wanted to touch on those bases. I have no idea where we are on time and whether I'm running long or anything, but I am going to pause because I wanna ask if Raul or Sunday or maybe my colleague Kathy or anything, do you feel that we have any questions that have come in that need to be addressed now or if there's any questions with regards to maybe something you feel like I haven't covered that you're wondering about. I'm open to that. Raul, are we are we at that point right there? I believe so, yes. And maybe I'm early, maybe I'm late. I don't know. 
The only question that came up that we did address in the chat was that um, I'm not sure if you shared your sound through Teams and so they couldn't hear the voice in Immersive Reader, but rest assured you will hear the voice in Immersive Reader. And the only okay. other caveat to that that I would add is that if you're using Google Chrome, it is an extension. And when you go to add the extension for Immersive Reader, it will tell you that it's not supported by Microsoft. That only means that it did not come from Microsoft. It does work with the program and it is a beautiful extension for Chrome. If you're using Edge, it's already incorporated in the Edge browser. Yeah, thank you, Kathy, for that. And Kathy is also a educator and can run circles about me. I'm on a level three, she's on a level 10, just to give you, give you a perspective there. But um, it's interesting, so I know better. Up I know better when I launched my meeting today, I know to always check this box for turning audio on. Apparently I did not do that. I heard the immersive reader. I apologize. It sounds like you did not on your end. So thank you for uh, forgiving me. <laughs> uh, so uh, it does work awesome. We also have, if, if, if you were to move forward with this and you need it, we have step-by-step -step instructions on how to add the immersive reader component within your Google Chrome browser. We've already written it out, so you don't have to go figure it out on your own. We've even created a short video that shows you what I showed you today. So there's even a video tutorial if you needed access to that and you wanted to show it to your students, um, then that capability is there as well. And uh, the only thing I didn't hear from Kathy that I think she alluded to though, is the Edge browser is a Microsoft browser. So what I showed you is already built into that browser. The extension has to be added to the Google Chrome browser. Awesome. So, Roll, I'm going to steal a minute here if I can. Do I have a couple minutes to steal? Yeah, sure. absolutely. Yes. Thank you. Uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to go dangerous here. Uh, this is not necessarily Jasper Active, but it's certainly something that will help the learning process. And I noticed that was built into the Adobe product is I want to applaud the Adobe people for thinking about this, just helping educators. This is nice little button over here. It looks kind of like a magnifying glass. And if you click it, it will help you find anything in Adobe that you need. And so from an educator standpoint, when students are first getting going with this, they're, they, they could easily get overwhelmed by this really multi button ribbon over here. But guess what? They can use this search feature and find where things are, what things are, et cetera. But also I noticed that you can come in here and you can do things like just type a keyword search. And then let's say I go in here to layers panel, then guess what it just did? It just opened up my layers panel. It just does things for you. It walks you through it. It's an awesome learning tool that's actually built into the Adobe product that I think complements our system as well, because we're giving you instructions telling you to do these things. And we've given you all the visuals we think are necessary, but maybe an additional supplement is necessary sometime. Uh, and so those tools are available to you. The last thing I'm going to mention here, and we'll go back in any Q&A that might be available, is in the summary assessment. I didn't hit on this too much, but I wanted to, I wanted to, let me click both and show you again. But if I click benchmark, I think I told you you could view the result and I showed you mine, all the red X's, you saw that. I know you remember that. But if I go to summary assessment, I'm like, wait a minute, that had a green check mark. Why don't I have view result here? That's because the summary assessment is getting them ready for the certification exam or demonstrating that they're ready. It can actually be done multiple times. And we will take their highest grade based on that. And I think that's a really awesome creative um, design in the system, at least from an educator's perspective. And that is it may take a student two or three possibly four times that's where the educator really has to step up and help them with their remediation and, and filling in those gaps of weaknesses and everything uh, you don't want them to do it too many times but you can do that summary assessment multiple times and demonstrate growth and content mastery each time those things are very important to those that are providing education to student learners uh, so i'm looking here real quick uh, now I don't think I know. I don't think I noted this, so I'm just going to go to it. I referenced that when you go into a lesson, they start with quizzes. What I did not say, and this will just be important for some educators to hear this and to see this, is that 
at any point in time during learning. If they need to go back and view their quiz results, we've built that into the application. But also, and I had this recently, I had a teacher call me up and say, I love your prescriptive learning pathway, but I want my, all of my students doing all of the coursework top to bottom, not just what your software said they need to do because they've showed proficiency in other areas. And guess what? We had the ability for you as the teacher to instruct the student to click activate all and it will disregard their benchmark result and their quiz results and it'll activate all lessons. So we thought that through as well. A lot of these features, a lot of these functions that you're seeing come to us by way of teacher feedback. And that's just one example right there. So we, we do try to be good listeners and so much so that we've even added this very large button out here. I mean, it just kind of, I think it gives you kind of an aspect of where our thinking is. Uh, we value feedback. The product is going to grow based on your feedback, and we are good listeners in that area. All right. Q&A or I think Sunday's got a got a moment she wants to steal from us too. Awesome. Thank you so much, Keith. Maybe Raul, can I get you to put the slide up again? Thank you. That was amazing. Thank you, Keith, for diving us into Jasper Active, Adobe Create, and um, giving us all the features and the amazing benefits that we have available. And I know now that we've all heard about it, we're wondering, how can I get my hands into it? How can I buy it? And where can I buy it? And who can I buy it from? So I'm here to give you a little bit of more update. Um, to follow up on what Keith said, our support contact information is available. If you need any kind of contact support, you can contact us at help at jasperactive.com. And I'll also give you a little bit of update right now. The courses that we have available that comes with the with uh, Jasper Active Adobe license is the Photoshop, the one that Keith just um, took us through. That is available right now when you purchase your license. And um, in the future, we are looking to add, we have a targeted date of January 2022 to add Adobe InDesign and also looking to add Adobe Illustrator April 2022. So coming next year, all three courses will be available within our suite. So we're excited about that. And to let you know, as um, our customers, when you purchase our license, um, you do have the license valid for one year. And um, if you purchase it now, you'll get the Photoshop. And once the new courses are released in early spring, they will be automatically added as well to your license. So it's a win-win situation for you. And um, if you would like to know how to buy it, um, in Canada, we have two amazing regional account managers with us. We have Jessica Casey and Ray Talili. Maybe they can wave so you can see them. And uh, they are just amazing people to work with. They are very, they're great as experts. They know what are the pricing, the deals, any kind of deals that you need for your classroom. They are your go to people. So please connect with them. You can email us at sales at cci.learning.com and any one of our teams will be available there to assist you. In US, we have a um, great partnership with Certaport and I know some of our Certaport team members are here and um, joining in with us. Thank you for coming and attending. And um, yeah, so for any of your Certaport um, territory managers that are local, um, you can reach out to them to get pricing packages, to get any kind of purchasing options. And if you're not sure who your, sale, um, your sales manager is from Certaport, please also email us at sales at cci.learning.com and we'll make sure to connect you with the right person. And um, yes. We have somebody asking if you could go up and show that support information page again. Of course, absolutely. There you go. There you go. So yeah, this is our support. Place. Yeah, no problem. This is our support website. So it's just support.jasperactive.com. And the contact support directly is help at jasperactive.com. Now, if you contact them, it goes directly to our support team. So they are available to support you every step of the way. And just to go back to the slide with um, how to buy and purchase. So globally, for also our friends that are joining from all around the world, we have um, 
We have partnership through um, Certaport and also we sell directly through CCI Learning as well. So again, email us with your all your inquiries and we'll be sure to contact you and give you the best pricings available. We have license available for class um, for class licenses for 30 use for 30 users. We have 250 users and we have site licenses available for 500 users as well. And right now, actually, we've just recently launched a uh, launching price. It's a special price that is available for you to take advantage of from now all the way to March 31st, 2022. So this is such a good thing to te definitely take advantage of. Give us a call or um, email us and we'll be happy to assist you with that. And I think now with um, that being said, we'll go into question and answers and um, anybody that has a question, feel free to unmute and um, give us your question, get any comments or feedback, or if you would like to just um, put on your video and say a quick hello, we would love to meet you as well. Shabby. No questions at all? Shabby, really? I know we had a few that are on. Um, someone asked about um, how do they get their hand on the recording. So once the meeting, once the um, webinar is finished, we will be sending out a thank you for participating and attending with us, and we will ensure to include the link for the recording there as well. So in case you've missed it, you missed some of the information, you can watch it again. And in case you would like to um, share it with some teachers or others that you clients that you know are interested in Jasper Active Adobe Create, feel free to share the recording with them as well. Maybe it's also important to mention that um, if they would like to test the product themselves, we have demos for 30 days so they can play with them and, uh, and see for themselves if, uh, the, the functionality and all the features that the product can offer. I noticed that Ray and Jess put their email addresses in the chat so everybody can reach them by just referring back to the chat. <clears throat> Thank you, Marlene. Ooh. Great. Well, there's a, um, there's a question about the plugin, Lingrid. Oh, okay. Um, Ingrid, yes. Uh, it might have had something to do with something that Sunday said, but I believe what uh, Ingrid might be referencing is the the correct term is it's an extension. It's a Adobe extension. Uh, but I mean, plugin is a good term too. I mean, different people are going to call it different things, but uh, I I can't read Ingrid's mind, but I think that it might have had. It's possible that someone used the word plugin, but it's an extension. Is how Jasper Active works within Adobe. Yeah, I just linked the support article for tech tech requirements for uh, the Adobe Create. It's an Anastasia add-in. It, it's a process. There's technical requirements and there's technical steps on how to add it into your Adobe product. So all of that is included. Yeah, thank you, Kathy. I actually meant to so reference that, so thank you for bringing that up. Uh, we do have full getting started step-by-step -step instructions built out already on the uh, support page. Do we have any other questions, comments, feedback? French lesson, right? <laughs> I know we were playing on all the accents today. You went from Raul to, to me. So you guys are doing great if you're following with us. <laughs> OK, perfect. So if there's no more uh, questions uh, for now, uh, you still have the contact information. If something comes up later, uh, we're all here to assist. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a fantastic day. Thank you, Keith. Um, and thank you everyone for participating. Have a great day. Thank you very much. Thank you everyone for joining. We look forward to hear from you soon.